Today we're going to be taking a look at some level 51 Zygarde battles here in the Master League. My new Zygarde, I want to go ahead and try it out. The team we're running, we got the Zygarde, we got the Ho, and we got the safe switch of the Dusk Main Necrozma. Battle first here, going to lead into a floor, just safe switch into our Necrozma. They're going to stay in and throw a Moon Blast because they seem to be a little weak to this thing in the back. Now I will mention here, these battles are actually at rank 16, so they're not really high ranking, um, but it is still good, and I do have this Pokemon I want to show it off. I haven't really had the time to do that many battles to get my rank up. Obviously, I just got back from um, New Zealand, but we're going to try to push a little bit harder in the second half of the season. What is it? It's about halfway through the season now recording this. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and grab a shield versus the Necrozma. Now we have both shields. I think actually we we're able to get both shields there. Sorry, I was a little distracted. We're going to come back into Zygarde, and this is where we're going to see the power of Zygarde. It's going to be able to tank hit after hit. Now this opponent is going to throw Dark Pulse, which is definitely not the preferred move, and this is what you're going to get is a couple small um, misplays in the lower rankings, but still, Zygarde would have been able to take that Moongeist Beam if they had decided to throw in that. And then finally, now we have two shields on the ho -Oh. We can go ahead and simply bring this in, and there's really nothing that can beat a two-shielded ho -Oh, um, in this scenario, especially when one of the Pokemon is Florges. They're going to come in here with Palkia now. Um, looking back at this, I should have thrown the Sacred Fire first because it's going to take two moves no matter what to take down this Palkia. So a little bit of a misplay here on my part, especially because I need to throw the second, and then I decided to throw the Sacred Fire the second time because I guess I didn't want to double debuff myself. The correct play there is though to throw the sacred fire first to try to debuff them and then throw the braver but it's not really going to matter in the end we still have one shield we can actually decide to no shield this here um, because Zygarde can actually win us this game, worst case. Um, but since they have no farm down power, we're going to get to no shield. Also, um, just in case they were able to kind of CMP tie us on a Brave Bird or something like that, we want that shield. But anyway, that's not a thing. That is game number one. Up into game number two versus Rock Zero. Let's take a look see here. Leading in to Ho. Oh, now we did go pretty positive with this team here, but Ho is going to be a finally. We definitely don't want Ho against the Necrozma. That's for certain. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we stay in here or at the very least get Ho on our ho -Oh. So we're going to stay in here, just spam the crunches. That's pretty much the key with Zygarde. This thing you're going to see a couple instances in these battles where it shows the bulk of this Pokemon, um, especially there, just eating up that Brave Bird. Now the opponent's going to throw a Brave Bird and then decide to stay in, which is an interesting play. They're going to let me get this crunch off, which is not good for them because now they're debuffed. So they're going to be forced to shield this. I guess they were planning on shielding anyway, but it's fine. We can go ahead and no shield this Brave Bird because we can actually take this as well. And now the opponent is double debuffed. They're going to go ahead and decide to switch out. We're going to read that really quickly and come to our Necroz, but they're bringing in the Lugia, so they got the ho -Oh Lugia team. We got the Gen 2 team here. Nonetheless, we have a great response to this. Really, Necrozma is a complete lockup to Lugia, and I guess it's a big reason we haven't really been seeing a lot of Lugia in the Master League, but the thing about Lugia, though, it is still tanky, and farming this thing down from this range with Shadow Claws is unfortunately probably not going to be possible without them getting off another charge move, and I really don't want them to get off an Arrow Blast because that would actually still do a lot of damage, so we're going to decide to throw here. I could probably throw in a few more Shadow Claws. I wasn't really counting, but it's fine. We have good health on our Necrozma, we got energy. So what are they going to decide to bring in? Probably back in the Lugia. And now at this point, I think I can just bring in my ho -Oh. There's not much they can do. We could either farm down their ho -Oh and destroy what's in the back. Like if they had a Kyogre in the back, maybe we'd be in a bit of trouble. But they're, uh, you know, that game was pretty much over there too. Shield advantage on Ho is pretty strong. And that's what you're going to see with this team. The whole point is to try to bait out the Kyogre in the back with the uh, Necrozma. And then hopefully um, Ho can sweep in the back because Ho is pretty strong in the Master League. Now, leading into a Dragonite here. I don't know if this is a fully powered up Dragonite and there's probably a couple instances in these battles where I'm running all level 50 Pokemon and my opponent might have level, um, you know, 40 Pokemon because we are in the lower ranks. But nonetheless, they're going to go ahead and throw a um, Dragon Claw. This was an interesting play of mine. I don't really know why I farmed up to the Earthquake. Probably could have swapped into Ho right away. But we're going to bring in the ho -Oh here. It's going to be a great answer to um, this Snorlax. Number one, because I think, again, this Snorlax might be underpowered. But also, Ho is just such a tanky bulker that taking these body slams and like it are completely fine. Um, and also, the reason we bring in the Ho here is because Ho doesn't do amazing against um, uh, Dragonite. So this is why we kind of want to bring that in. So they're going to bring back in Dragonite. And we're going to get to a Brave Bird here, which just means we can go ahead and get, I believe it is the second shield, unless they shielded once already. I uh, know the first shield, sorry. Now at this point, I decide to swap in combo back in um, because I really didn't want them getting that far down. I could have gone into Necrozma here as well as a secondary option, but we're just going to go ahead and bring in the Zygarde, sack it here. But really, we're not sacking it because Dragon Claw barely does any damage. This thing is an absolute tank. I decide to throw the Crunch 
right away. Um, they aren't switch locks, so they could have definitely switched there, but they decided to just sack the Dragonite. In the back, it's a Mewtwo. Now, I was a little scared here because I was like, Mewtwo's gonna get so much energy, but they're forced to throw because I would get to a crunch here. Now, obviously they could take a crunch, but it would still be a decent amount of damage. And when I have two shields like that, they don't really want um, that much damage. And then finally bringing them to Crows when this game is completely over up two shields. Um, but yeah, that's insane. Like they couldn't farm us down there. I think they end up like lagging out or leaving or something like that. Um, but we're able to take this game, no problem. But you could see that Zygar was eating up those Psycho Cuts and we were threatening a crunch there on the Mewtwo. So they weren't really forced to throw again. They could have just taken the crunch and farmed down because it wouldn't have done that much damage. But no matter what, that game would have been over. So GG's to my opponent. Okay, moving into the next game, the same lead here, Dragonite into Zygarde. Now again, this is one of those neutral leads here where they can take a decent amount of damage, especially if they're running Dragon Breath. I think it's a little bit better. I'm not sure why some people were running Dragon Tail. I think Dragon Breath is still just the better option on Dragonite. But nonetheless, you always want to throw the crunch right away just in case you get a debuff here. But we can go ahead and no shield this. We're able to take two crunches from this range. Not sure with the Dragon Breath though. I'm sorry, two Dragon Claws. They're gonna go ahead and throw back to back. I was actually debating catching that second one on the um, Zygarde, but we end up deciding to let it go. And I decide here because they are gonna win that switch advantage there, most likely if I stayed in, to get a little bit of an energy lead on the Crows. Now they decide to bring in extra drill. This is a mud slap extra drill, one of those new types of extra drills. And this is where I'm fearing a little because Ho obviously doesn't do amazing against extra drill because it does have access to Rock Slide. We do have two shields. Nonetheless here, I decide to shield. I'm not sure if this was the correct play. I definitely probably should have just no shield brought in Ho-Ho. Um, but I decide to shield just because I want to get as much damage on this extra drill as I can. Yeah, definitely probably shouldn't have shielded in this scenario. Now let's say decide to shield and this is where things are um, looking a little bit better, but still a little bit scary. Now, what ends up happening here? I forget. I bring in the hoe, they decide to swap. For some reason I swapped because I thought they were gonna throw right away and I was gonna be able to catch, um, but I guess I didn't really pre-read, but this is still completely fine. And the reason being is we can very easily no shield this move. It's gonna be an ancient power, but ho -Oh is tanky enough to take the four times two effective damage. What we can do here is we can go ahead and get to the sacred fire to completely clean up the um, Sacred Fire is a pretty strong move. Boom, goodbye Togekiss. And finally here, they're not gonna be able to double up before we get to the Brave Bird. And Extra Drill is a pretty glassy Pokemon. So even a resisted Brave Bird will handle this. I think I could have easily swept this game if I just kept two shields on the Ho-Oh and just let the Necrozma go. Um, but still, we recognize the mistake, so we'll know for next time. And there you go, that is a 4-0 or I don't know if I won that first set because I battled a while back. So anyway, getting into the next game, we got a Shadow Snorlax. Zygarde does very well here because Zygarde is very tanky. And again, we want the Shadow Snorlax. And I guess a little tip, how I think about um, these battles is if I see a Snorlax in the lead, I think about what Pokemon in the back are weak to Snorlax. And if there are some Pokemon in the back that are weak to Snorlax and I have a neutral lead, I think that's a good lead for me because that means that the Snorlax is not on the Necrozma, which we would not really want to see as much. Nonetheless, Snorlax going to be able to take... Um, some of these dragon tails, but as you can see, the health difference here and the CP difference and the bulk difference is just absolutely insane. We're able to take them deep into the red before they can get us into the yellow or deep into the yellow before they can get us into the yellow. Nonetheless, Crunch is going to take them into the red. At this point, they can even throw one more body slam, which they do get to here. But again, this is just little little chip damage here. I guess they're just trying to chip um, our, Necro our Zygar. We have still a lot of health here. Now, they decide to bring in the... Um, Mamoswine, which obviously is a lot of damage. I don't want them to farm me down. And this was actually great. A lot of times this happened where they brought in Mamoswine. What we can do here is we can bring in Necrozma because we have two answers to Mamoswine. And then what Necrozma does is it will bait out another Pokemon in the back, but Necrozma does so well generally neutrally because it has such hard hitting charge moves that it's completely fine. Now, they decide to bring in Mewtwo. I decide to shield here because I know I can get the second shield off of them and get a um, one to zero shield situation since there's no way they're gonna go ahead and no shield this because then the is gonna wreak havoc on their back line. And what I can do here is I forgot, I banked that crunch, so now I can combo play with the crunch. Now, as you can see, again, that's how much a crunch does to a Mewtwo, just because Zygar's attack is so low. It's still a decent amount of damage, but Mewtwo can definitely take some charge moves from um, the Zygar, but nonetheless, this game is pretty much completely over. I decide to bring in the Necrozma just for the fun of it because I wanna see if I can completely sweep this game with Necrozma and not show them my third Pokemon. This is just a little fun. Obviously here, ho -Oh would just completely wreak havoc and win this game. But nonetheless, we bring in Necrozma, we get to the Sun Seal Strike, that will completely take care of the Mamoswine and then two little Shadow Claws, or three little Shadow Claws. Goodbye, you.
too. GG's. Yeah, this team was definitely very strong, but there was one big weakness to this team and you're gonna see it later in the battles. Um, here we go, leading in to a um, Gyarados. Now Gyarados is an interesting lead because it does have super effective Dragon Breath damage and Aqua Tail for neutral, but it's still not that bad for Zygarde because this thing is an absolute tank. Even though we're only doing neutral damage to it, we have so much bulk that it kind of is better in our favor. Nonetheless, we're getting to a crunch here. We get the defense debuff. That's always amazing. Um, and that's honestly just the most toxic part of this Pokemon um, is that it can debuff and also just how much bulk it has. This thing is just an absolute beast. Nonetheless, getting hit with the crunch here, they're going to get the debu defense debuff. So I guess it's a one for one. As you can see here, we very easily win that lead and we have energy to leave with. Now we decide when they bring in the Mammoth Swine to go ahead and throw the crunch right away. And again, another scenario where I don't want them farming me down. So we're going to instantly swap in to the Necrozma. What are they going to bring in? They're going to bring in a Rhyperior, which is a little scary because again, this is a Pokemon that can completely destroy our backline. Good thing though, we do have Sun Seal Strike, so we're able to go ahead and throw that to go ahead and burn the last shield. Now, probably could have baited there, probably could have baited there, but nonetheless, here I decide to no shield because I know it's just gonna be a breaking swipe. All they can do here against the Necrozma is hit us with super effective fast move damage. I decide to shield this second one just because I do want to get this thing a little bit lower because I know that with my charge moves on Ho-Oh, Sacred Fire and Brave Bird, you're not really going to be able to handle this thing. It's going to be a little awkward. So I do want to bring them into a lower health range. I decide to bring back in the Zygarde. I don't really know why, I guess, to bait back out the Mamoswine, um, which I guess ends up working. They bring up the Mamoswine, which now means we can easily win this game with ho -Oh. Probably could have just brought in the ho -Oh and still won this game. But nonetheless, they go ahead and get to two Avalanches. We're going to shield the second one just because I know that Rhyperior just threw all of its energy and they are in Brave Bird range. So as long as we farm this thing down successfully, we can go ahead and throw Brave Bird. Even if they need two Brave Birds, I think we could get to two Brave Birds before they get to um, a Rock Wrecker because we are not in Breaking Swipe range. So that is a GG's right there. And this brings us into our next battle. Joanless, I think is the user. And this is the game where we kind of struggled. Already losing the lead, deciding to safe switch into the Necrozma and we get answered with the ho -Oh. Now I'd make a couple bad plays here. First of all, we're going to go ahead and throw the Dark Bolts, which is completely fine. This is great here. We are not winning this lead and I needed to recognize that we are not winning this lead. And what we end up doing here is we decide to shield because I'm like, I could force a shield from them here um, and go down one shield. But really, there's no value to this because at the end of the day, they're going to go ahead and be able to farm us down and have energy for the back line. So they're not only going to win switch, but they're also going to have energy for the back line. And also, I'm going to have less shield. So pretty much a bad play there. We do end up forcing a shield, which is good. Ho is now in a pretty low range. Um, and I also make a misplay here. I was accidentally shield because I was watching like half watching a YouTube video and I was just kind of tapping on the screen. So obviously that's terrible. We didn't want to use that shield there. Do not shield your Zygarde. Um, so I ended up shielding a Sacred Fire and then they end up getting to a Bray Bird. So this is like worst case scenario. We are in trouble. Nonetheless, we go ahead and take this out. They bring in Zacian and I'm trying to think like, is there a way I win this game down a shield with a Zacian and a Ho in the back? Like maybe, uh, but this is where the opponent kind of makes an amazing read. We go ahead and farm up here. We can go ahead and take a play rough. It's not too bad by any means. Um, and we go ahead and eat that up. Then I go ahead and decide to throw the Earthquake right when I get it and they end up catching on a Yvelta. And Yvelta is one of those Pokemon that this team can struggle against um, a little bit because it is a obviously amazing answer to Necrozma. Ho does decent against it, um, Z but Zygarde doesn't do good against it at all. So we end up losing that game. A couple misplays for my part. Definitely could have potentially won that game, especially if they didn't catch and I didn't waste that shield. I think there was still potential. Um, but you always got, this is why we watch our videos back. This is why you guys should review your battles as well if you want to get a, a become a better battler um, because you will be able to see the mistakes you make. Nonetheless, leading into our final game here, we're going to go ahead and lead into a Garchomp with the Zygarde. This is a good lead. Um, now, they do have Outrage, which is pretty scary, but they are on Dragon Tail. So we're going to go ahead and farm up. We're going to throw the Crunch right away. They throw at the same time. I'm not sure the counts for this, so I was scared this could be an Outrage, but I let it through anyway because I knew I could take an Outrage. Ends up just being a Sand Tomb, which is not bad at all. And now I guess I know that the counts to Sand Tomb are five. So I know that if they only throw five, they're throwing another Sand Tomb. So we go ahead and throw. We get the defense debuff again. This like, what is the defense chance on Crunch? It's crazy. Nonetheless, they get to another move. It's a Sand Tomb because again, they did not, they only threw four or five. So um, it's not enough. Nonetheless, we can go ahead and farm them down. We barely win switch advantage there, but we do leave with a Crunch, which is amazing. So I decide to throw that into whatever comes in. And this is where you're going to see the bulk of Zygarde. Look how much health we have. Now, obviously this opponent is throwing quad times moves, quad times resistant moves, but 
the damage that those thunder shocks are doing i don't even see my health bars going down like it's literally doing zero damage so we go ahead and get to two crunches and then we're like you know what let's just save the zygarde so we switch into necrozma because we have two decent answers here to mel metal um so necrozma comes in here the opponent stays in they let's get off the double iron bash i'm not even sure if this is a level 50 um uh Mel Mel. this is honestly us just bullying people in rank 16 um and then finally in the back it is a um Togekiss, and that is just a very simple cheat cheese so yeah guys that is zygarde battles in pokemon go it is honestly a pretty toxic pokemon and i did want to show off some battles to you guys with this so hope you guys enjoy this video watch the one below if you enjoyed this one you'll enjoy that one as well and stay tuned for plenty of pvp streams if you want to watch me do pvp we usually live stream it every single week so stay tuned for those on the live section of the channel nonetheless we'll catch you all in the next one for everybody peace